ultimately, as a publisher reaches peak monetization and they have enough ads to fill every ad break and they've figured out the ads that are generating the most revenue, the, the, real, the real auction then begins um, to ensure that you have matched the ad content to the creative content. Today, you know, a lot of that is still kind of divorced and you end up with ad quality experiences that aren't necessarily um, enjoyable for the user and there's a variety of issues that people run into and you hear customer complaints on SVOD and AVOD services all the time about low quality ads, whether the volume may not be normalized, they might be seeing the same ad too frequently, um, it may be targeted incorrectly, it may be really long, it may be something that is just distasteful, but ultimately if the consumer has a bad experience with an app or a channel or a service or a hardware manufacturer, there's enough choice that they can go elsewhere. Um, and so the publishers that prioritize the experience of the ads with the content will be rewarded um, over the ones that do not. Hmm. So in that environment, what are some of the challenges that you're seeing around ad quality and, and ad experiences in connected TV? And, and also, why is it so difficult for publishers in the industry at large to address those concerns? A lot of the issues spring from the complicated way by which ads end up adjacent to each other. Uh, typically, an app or a channel might owe a portion of their inventory to multiple parties. Um, that might be the hardware manufacturer where their app is run or um, it might be uh, related to the ownership of the content. So ultimately you might have two, three, four parties contributing ads into an ad experience and the ads aren't self-aware. So if the hardware manufacturer sends a set of ads and the content manufacturer sends a set of ads and another party, a monetization partner, sends a set of ads. They can't look around and know that they are accidentally playing next to each other and so you end up with many, many different ex experiences. Um, and because each partner might be using their own tech stack, the tech stacks don't communicate and so you, you end up in a position where you, know, you have to, you have to kind of think your way out of the box and solve the problems with what you have and not try to create an idealistic world that doesn't exist. So now what is this term stitching? Could you explain that a little more? And also just tell us a bit more about some of the tools SpringServe has been working on to alleviate some of the pain points that you're seeing? Absolutely, so one of the things that we've noticed at SpringServe over time is that we see people with kind of an intent to create um, a better ad experience and there, there are gaps um, and we, we created tools to kind of understand, you know, how, how did we miss something? You know, we made the correct things to address frequency and competitive separation, so something else must be going on if the tools we already made are failing. Um, and so as we, as we dug a little deeper and started kind of monitoring every single creative um, with an ad library inside of SpringServe, and we started to notice patterns between um, ads coming from different partners where uh, one of the things that we saw very repetitively was it was more than one ad stitched together. So an example of this would be that you have 90 seconds in an ad break, somebody comes in with a 30 or a 60 second ad, and then behind that the publisher and the buy side is unaware that it might have been two 15 second ads stitched together and then served as one ad or a 45 and a 15 stitched together to serve as one ad. And so it, it violated the ad quality rules in such a way that traditionally you would send through information about the ads. You would know that the advertiser domain was present, but if you have two ads together, you know, the payload doesn't allow you to put multiple you know, brands in one payload. And so it was, it was breaking all the tools that we made. And so the, the, you know, naturally um, we had to make another tool to catch the things that the original tools weren't. Um, so we, we created this product called Binge Watcher. Um, Binge Watcher 
binge watches. It doesn't watch content though, it watches ads. And then it, it saves all the ads, it gives them a creative ID. It uses machine vision to see what's happening in the ad. It transcribes the, the spoken word into a transcript um, that's searchable and usable. And, and from that service, we were able to kind of identify all of these areas where people with the best intentions for an ad experience were unbeknownst to them allowing things to happen that they just didn't even know existed.